hello, hello. I'm talking today about William Laardy, or William the Bold of Douglas. He was born circa 1240, the second son of William Longleg of Douglas and Constance of Fodden. He first appears on record in 1256, when his father granted him some lands around Warrenden, and he may have partaken in the Eighth Crusade in 1270, as a companion to Earl David de Strathpody of Athol. Of course, the Eighth Crusade was an utter shambles. Earl David perished near Carthage, and William of Douglas returned to Scotland with little to show for the venture. Sometime after 1274, following the deaths of his father and older brother, William the Bold came to possess his family's estates in both Scotland and England. He was knighted by 1288, and in the following year we see him styled Lord of Douglas, with his seat at Douglas Castle. It was there that he imprisoned his brother-in-law, Hugh de Abernethy, on suspicions of murdering the Earl of Fife in 1288. Despite a later call for Hugh's transfer to another prison, he seems to have died at Douglas Castle circa 1292. Meanwhile, politics in Scotland were heating to boiling point. King Alexander III had unexpectedly died in 1286, leaving no obvious heirs except for his infant granddaughter, Margaret of Norway. Unfortunately, she died too in September of 1290, and Scotland's noble guardians fatefully requested the help of their southern neighbor, the widely respected and inarguably powerful King Edward I of England. What followed was a legal contest for Scotland's vacant throne, and with some predictability, King Edward openly milked the situation to his own advantage. In November 1292, he finally backed the ascension of John Balliol, who quickly proved to be a puppet of the new English regime and is not unfairly remembered as perhaps the worst of Scotland's kings. Through all of these events, Lord William of Douglas repeatedly found himself at odds with the overbearing King Edward of England. It began in 1288 when Lord William, a widower since the death of his first wife, Elizabeth Stuart, decided to abduct the wealthy heiress, Eleanor Ferreres. Enlisting the help of his friend and fellow baron, John Wishart, the Lord of Douglas set upon Fawside Castle and he whisked Lady Eleanor away. Well, naturally she was flattered and she married her wooer, but this landed both of them in trouble with their overlord, King Edward, who confiscated all of their English estates. The newlyweds managed to avoid his direct wrath for a while by remaining in Scotland, but eventually William was arrested. Coming to terms then, he and Eleanor returned to favor in May 1290. And yet, by the end of 1291, for unknown reasons, William had suddenly fallen from favor again. His lordship in Douglasdale was declared forfeit, and English governors were sent to occupy his family lands. Decidedly aloof, William failed to attend the first parliament of the newly crowned King John Balliol in February 1293. And when he appeared at Stirling for a second parliament that August, he was merely arrested for his obstinacy. Fortunately, William still had many allies in Scotland, and he was not the only one to feel disappointed by their spineless new king. A new council of guardians formed to take the reins of government into their own hands, and by 1296, they were boldly resisting King Edward's supremacy. They went so far as to forge an alliance with his enemy, the King of France, and they even took up arms to raid across the border into England. Since William the Bold had lent his support to this movement, he was entrusted with defending the very important border town of Berwick. From this position, then, he was the first to face the wrath of King Edward, who marched sternly north that spring. On March 30th, 1296, Berwick was attacked by land and sea, bombarded relentlessly by a massive English army until its walls were inevitably breached. The town was then subjected to an infamous and unrestrained bloodbath. It's likely that well over 10,000 people were slaughtered by Edward's men. William of Douglas surrendered the castle, thus sparing his garrison, and he was imprisoned there while Edward effectively conquered the rest of the northern kingdom. John Balliol was soon deposed and sent away from Scotland completely, and in August a parliament at Berwick compelled William the Bold and every other Scottish noble to swear explicit fealty to Edward instead. Although restored to his lands in Scotland, Lord William was deprived of his diverse English estates, which doubtless encouraged him to join with rebels the following year. In May 1297, he memorably raided the treasury at Scone with the passionate leader William Wallace, and together they sent the English justiciar William to Armsby, fleeing for his life. Afterward, William the Bold joined a wider muster of rebellious Scottish nobles, but regrettably, old rivalries and other disagreements flared among them, so that when they encountered a large English army near Irvine, they merely capitulated. William the Bold was imprisoned at Berwick once more, and he was later hauled away for safer keeping at the Tower of London. It was there that he died on 24 January 1298. But the fight for Scotland's freedom, of course, lived on, and all three of William's sons, James Hugh and Archibald, were to take an active part in it. That's the life of Lord William the Bold of Douglas. Thank you so much for watching.